Welcome to our lecture online, and here is the next uh, episode, so to speak, of our look at the Big Bang. So in the previous video, we came to the conclusion that we didn't think the universe was infinite. Olber's paradox pretty well prohibited that from being the case. So here we thought we lived in a finite universe. We didn't know how far the universe went, why it was finite, why it was not infinite. We didn't know any of those things. But now we began to wrestle with the concept of was the universe static or was the universe changing? And this was before Hubble discovered that the universe was indeed expanding. Back in 1915, Einstein, just coming off his victories in understanding the theories of relativity, both the special and the, and the general theory of relativity, he understood from that that gravity was caused by the bending of space. Whenever there was a star in space, space around it would bend and cause the effect of gravity. And so whenever there were two objects close together, gravity would tend to pull them together. He also discovered, with the theory of relativity, that space and time were not constant. That time itself would depend upon how much space was bent. The more space was bent by the presence of a lot of mass, like a star or a galaxy, the slower the time would run. And so in ultimate gravity, for example in black holes, which of course back then they don't know yet, Basically, time would have to stand still because of the enormous curvature of space right there. So Einstein realized that space was not uniform, especially because of his theories of relativity as far as gravity and time was concerned. But yet, he believed that the general concept that the universe was static, he believed that that was probably the case. So he began to calculate, based upon his equations and theories of relativity, how the universe would have to behave based upon these principles. And to his surprise, what he found was that his calculations contradicted the concept of the static universe. What he found was his calculations showed that either the universe should be expanding or the universe should be collapsing. And that was based upon the curvature space and gravity. Depending upon how much mass was in the universe, if there was a certain amount of critical mass or beyond the critical mass, the universe would eventually collapse because the gravity would pull everything close together. And if there was not enough gravity and space was expanding and things were flying apart from one another, if there was not enough gravity there, the, the expansion would just continue. And it seemed very odd that space could actually be static because it would have to be an extremely fine line between expanding and contracting, imploding on itself or blowing away from each other. They, it had to be at an extremely fine line between the two. And it was mathematically virtually impossible. It would just have to be just perfect for the universe to be static. Matter of fact, when he continued his calculations, he was on the impression that the calculations showed that eventually the universe, if it was expanding, would stop and recontract and implode in itself, or maybe it was already doing that, and we didn't know. So to fight that, here was what we'd call his biggest blunder. And I would say that any scientist, even as smart as Einstein, can fall in the same trap. It's when we start thinking about something and presuppose something. Presuppose that something is true even though our data doesn't say so. Just a general belief. If every scientist in the world believes a certain thing and you're sitting there going, hmm, my data doesn't agree with that, you tend to capitulate. Even Einstein did. And so what he did was, okay, I believe that the universe is static. Everybody else seems to believe so. Everybody else uh, everybody else's concept seems to say that yes, we must be in a static situation, even though my new theory, my calculations don't make that possible. I need to do something. There must be something wrong with my calculations. And what he did was he added a constant, and he called it a cosmological constant. He said, to prevent the universe from collapsing, maybe there is something there that holds it back from collapsing, because I really believe that the universe is static. And so what he said was, okay, we have a collapsing universe, but I add this, my constant to it, and then it becomes one. One would, of course, be the representation of no contraction and no expansion. And so this is, this is what he called the cosmological constant. And he thought of it as kind of like a force pushing back against the collapse of the universe. He said, for everything to work out, all I need is just one more constant, something holding things from collapsing, and everything will stay in a nice static situation. And that's how he left that theory. Turns out, of course, that he was wrong. He realized later he was wrong, and of course, who was it that proved him wrong? Hubble himself. Not much later than 1915, when Hubble began to realize that galaxies were expanding away from each other, and the whole universe was expanding, all of a sudden, Einstein realized, 
wow, did I make a blunder here? Did I make a mistake? Now it turns out that later on we did find out that this does have an interest and does have a special meaning. There's no such thing as a cosmological constant the way Einstein envisioned it, but there is the concept of whether or not the universe is either flat, curves away, or curves inward. In a later video, I'll show you a little bit more about what that exactly means, but it does have something to do with the ultimate fate of the universe. For many years, even until the 1990s, people didn't know if the universe was going to continue to expand or eventually stop the expansion and then implode in on itself again. So Einstein wasn't that far off saying, is there something there that will prevent the universe from imploding or will the, you know, and will the universe expand forever? But in his true concept that he had here when he thought, oh, I need something there so that my equations and my thinking matches the general concept of whatever else is saying, that was a big mistake. And that's a big mistake for any scientist at any time. No matter if the entire world says it's A and your calculation come out and says it's B and your calculations are based on facts, and known theories, then you must question everybody else that says A. And so that was an interesting lesson that we learned from him. But again, we began to realize, even in the early calculations with Einstein said, we have a universe that is not static. And with Olber's, um, Olber's uh, paradox, we know that the universe was not infinite. So if it's not static and it's not infinite, which means the universe must have had a beginning. And that's what set up the concept of the Big Bang. We start looking for that evidence. And as you know from the previous videos, we found a lot of evidence. So what we're going to do now is go back and start illustrating the entire early history of the universe, of the Big Bang, and why it makes so much sense that the universe started in that particular way.